In today's video, we're looking at why grid areas are awesome. And, well, it's, it's because they are. Hi there, my name is Kevin, and here on my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And as I just said, we're going to be looking at grid areas this week, but before I get to that, a couple of really fast things. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but first off, if you missed it, uh, on Monday, so a couple days ago, I put out a video announcing that uh, the community has been opened to everyone. So originally it was for patrons only, but we decided... Uh, to open it up to everyone and since then this is like 24 hours after that that I'm recording this and we're already over 200 people so that's really really cool and awesome and I'd love it if you could come join that party too. Uh, so there is a link down in the description below you'll see it pretty early on in the description you just click that then you just have to give yourself a, a little username uh, problem I guess if you're not already on discord and then you're in that's it. Uh, super simple so over there we are there's already a lot of cool discussions going on uh, you know, ask questions, just hang out with other cool devs, and lots of fun stuff going on there. So I'd encourage you to go and check it out and join us if you haven't already. The other big thing I want to talk about, and for this is more big for me, um, we hit 50,000 subscribers here. And I'm saying we because, you know, you're part of the 50,000 subscribers. And that's awesome. That's just crazy. I, I could see it coming, but I sort of lost track of it. And I planned a 50k video, and then I guess the community thing sort of, you know, the opening up the community sort of acts as my thank you for getting here. Um, but I do want to do the video still, but I lost track of everything because I'm really kind of stressed out a little bit about what I'm going to be talking about on Friday. Uh, so you'll learn more about that when we get to Friday. And that had me a bit distracted, and I went off schedule a bit. So there will be sort of a, a late thank you 50k video uh, at one point coming up. I'm not sure when I'll actually get around to it, but it is on its way and sort of in production. Um, but enough of all of that. You're here to learn about grid areas and why they're amazing. So I've already done some videos on grid. I've done a, I had a handful of them. Uh, I have a little series on it, so you can check that out. They're all grouped together. And I have talked about grid areas before, but grid areas... When I first saw them, like, this is the coolest thing. Naming them, this is amazing. And then I'm like, well, it seems cool. But then I'm writing all this extra code because I'm defining my columns, defining my rows, and then I have to name them. And I didn't, I, just, ah, I can just reference the line numbers because line numbers seem kind of weird. But once you get used to line numbers, they're not that bad. You can add in some line names. And overall, I thought that was a lot easier to do. But the more I've used Grid, and I haven't done a lot of videos focusing on Grid specifically, but I've continued to use it, and the more I use it, the more amazing Grid areas come up, especially when it comes to media queries. They just make your life so easy. And you actually get to write less code, not more like I'd originally thought when I first started playing with them. And I wanna show you why I love them so much. So let's go and do just that. So I am here in VS Code to do this, but I have put a link in the description of this video to a code pen that has everything. It'll be the finished version of it that the link is there for, but you can come in and play around with it if you'd like. Um, so what we're doing here is I have my content and what I pretty much want to do is place all of this on the grid. So I'm going to leave all this here at the top and then my demo, more specific demo things, I'm going to come down here to do. So right here on the body, I can put on a display of grid and if I hit save well now it's filling up the whole space that's just happening because I've set a min height of the body to 100 uh, vh so it has to fill up the whole screen at, uh, at a bare minimum and but when I do that everything is stretching to fit now part of this I am assuming you do have some experience with grid already so I'm not going to go into too much detail on everything but I want to really explore why grid areas are the best so before we do that, I am going to start with grid template columns here. So I'm assuming you know how these work. So I'm going to do a little layout like I often do. So I do a min max here. Uh, I'm just going to do something really simple for demo purposes. We'll do a 650 for the large. Uh, I'm going to set up a, another one here. And it's just normally I wouldn't do this, but just to keep make it a bit easier for you guys to see, I'm going to put this on a different line. Uh, so we'll do another min max of 200 pixels. 350 and we'll put a 1.5 m all the way on the side there so let's hit save and see how that looks so you can see 1.5 then i have my 450 to 650 i have my 200 to 350 and then i have my 1.5 over there on the end 
Now that's not so bad, and this is how I used to always work. I like drew template columns, I found them simple, and I thought grid areas were a bit of a waste of time. Because uh, now it's not very hard I, to do anything. I can say I want my header and my footer to both be a grid column one over four. And once I figured out line um, numbering and stuff, it became super intuitive for me to use just the line numbers for everything. So that my main content was a uh, grid column of two, three, or is a grid column of two, three. We'll get it in the main area there. We have uh, the sidebar. Everything's sort of falling more or less where I want it to now. Sidebar can have its grid column of uh, three, four, and that's not working. This should be one over five, right? There we go, that's what I wanted. Uh, that makes a bit more sense. So one over five, two to three, three to four, and then one to five, and I get a little layout like that. Um, now obviously the heights and stuff are off a little bit, but it gives you an idea of how I could build a layout. And that works great in my opinion. It's how I am used to doing things, and it doesn't take very long to set up. And taking the time to set up grid template areas, well it takes a while to get this exact same thing. I would already have all of this set up, but then I'd also have to come here and add a new line of grid template areas. And then I can come and do my header, 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 uh, dot, you know, and if we can do it like that, so it takes up all that main side, and then empty. Yeah, you don't have to do it with all these dots, so it's taking a little bit longer to set up, but footer, footer, footer. Um, so, you know, this could be one dot. It's a little simpler to set up, but it sort of gives you a better idea of the layout. So I could do something like that, but then I'd have to come and also, you know, instead of, I, I'm not replacing this, but um, we are going to end up with one extra line because each one of these, so my grid area is now header. And... We'll fast forward while I do the rest of this. All right, there we go. So I've accomplished the same thing that I just had, but I had to take the extra time to set this up. So that's why at the beginning, I wasn't really a big fan of doing it. It seems like a lot of extra work for nothing. Except, first of all, it's a lot easier to understand what's going on. If you were new to this project and you came across this, this is so much easier to envision what the layout is actually going to look like. You know, I don't have to look at this. I can look at this and probably know roughly what the layout's going to look like right away. Uh, and that's just super handy. And the real magic comes into play when you start needing media queries. And we all need to have media queries, right? So if we go back to assigning grid columns, you know, if let's just, I'm going to copy everything I did here so I don't lose it, but we're going to go back. We're going to go back to this world right here where we have our grid columns. Now where this could be kind of annoying is you go, oh, well, I, I, I need to have media queries in here. So I might need something that has, uh, you know, this would probably be a lot simpler at the beginning. So I might have just the 1.5 and in the middle here I have one FR or something like that. So it sets up a one column sort of thing. So then this would have to be a one three, uh, one four, two, three, one, uh, this would also become a two, three. So with small screens, it's set up something like that. And then I'd want to have to come in and do my media query at media screen only and min width, let's just say 860. And then we'd have to set everything else up in here again. So we do, so we'd say body and have our grid template columns. And then I'd have to set up my grid template columns. So I'm not going to do all that right now, but then I'd also have to come in and redefine all of this, just like we had it before. And you might have multiple media queries and every time you're redefining everything here, and that's a bit of a nightmare and you're doing a lot of extra code for nothing. Uh, because grid template areas let us do all of that. So if we go back to having it uh, like we, you know, I just took a step back here. Let me just format this a little better. There we go. Okay. So if we have it like this now, um, if I want to have my media queries, we can do it in a much simpler way. So uh, this, I'm just going to cut that out for now. Uh, so here we can have our grid template columns. 
and we'll do what I was just looking at, 1FR 1 1.5, and then my grid template areas. And I'm just going to do header, header, header. Whoops. Then I can do my uh, dot, and again, I can do dot main dot just like that if I want to, if you're really after uh, saving. So dot side dot and then my footer footer and if you wanted to leave it like that it's going to work so let's hit save uh, footer 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 there we go <laughs> uh, and we fix that and you know if you prefer just because it makes it a little bit more visually friendly to look at you can have multiple dots uh, across and it will work Perfecto. It doesn't do anything. Just don't give a grid area name a whole bunch of dots. You can add spaces, whatever you want to make it a bit more obvious. And you can see that's exactly what we're getting here, except it's not a huge space. It's just a little space. Um, but it, yeah, it's easy to look at. And normally I won't do it like that, though. But for demos, sometimes I like showing that you can because it can make things a little prettier and a little easier to understand exactly what's happening there. But we'll, okay, let's go back like this because I think it is a bit more realistic to write it like that. Um, so this is working fantastic, it's nice, but now I want to build in my media query. All I have to do is do my at media screen only and min width 860 pixels. And now we can do our body has grid template. Oh, we can just actually paste in what we had before. Oh no, I can't. Uh, and I copied something else, uh, so I can't paste in what I had. So I'm just going to fast forward this really fast because we're going back to the grid that we just had. All right, there we go. So now we have this set up here. So I'm not having to redefine the line numbers or anything like that for this. So that's really awesome. So if I hit save, it's working. Now this should be working, except uh, I'm silly and I wrote screen only instead of only screen which I tend to do a lot. Uh, there we go. So we can see that it is working um, the way in, it was intended. And we have our little mobile view here. So we can see at our breakpoint, it switches uh, from, we have our this where the stacked one, and then we get our columns just like that. And if I ever needed to build in another one, it's nice and easy to do. I don't have to redefine anything with this stuff here because my header is always on my header. My main content is always on the main. One other thing that's really cool also um, is if I'm keeping, say I have my header across here, if instead of saying grid area, I actually say this is grid column, but I do a header over a header and I hit save on that, it, um, it's actually still working. And I think that's so cool. Uh, so this can have certain times when it's kind of useful. Um, so I think that's really neat. And if you want to explore why that's happening, if we do a little inspect on one of these, if we find it in here, um, if we look at the computed styles on it, and I look at the grid, let's find it. Um, you won't actually, in the computed styles, you won't actually find a um, grid row. You won't actually find a grid area. You're actually gonna find that it sets it up as grid columns start and end and a grid row start and end. And it's so the area is pretty much defining the the whole thing. So I'm actually gonna go back to layout and I'm if you're using grid, please use, um, if you're developing grid, please use Firefox because Firefox has this awesome overlay grid thing. So you can see what you're doing. So it's pretty much saying like this is, you know, you can see header, 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 header. But what it's pretty much doing is saying here we're starting header and here is the end of the header. So that's the column. And then row is starting here and ending here. So um, because of that, you can set things up not only using the grid area, but you can also use grid columns or grid rows to position stuff. Um, and that can be used in sort of, you know, unconventional ways sometimes, but um, it's really helpful, I find, to know that. And uh, one of those random things that you probably won't use too often, but it could be, uh, it could really come in handy at one point. And this is just a really super basic example of it. If we want to take a look, um, I do have another file here open. This is something I'm building for my SAS course, which 
Uh, it's a site we're going to build together at the very end of the course. I'm working on building it out now, and it's what gave me the idea for this video uh, because I just loved doing it so much when I was building this out, um, and it reminded me of how much it can be useful. So uh, if you're not used to SAS, a few things here might look a little bit weird, but you can tell pretty right off the bat um, I'm using my grid area. So right at the top, I'm setting up my titles are on a grid area. Everything is just getting assigned a grid area. So the title here, the image right there has the, well, there I'm actually using a grid column. And uh, as we looked at, we can use grid columns with um, names that can also make things work, which is kind of cool. And uh, so everything's assigned its own little area. And then what I've done is if we do a little inspect on here, and I'll go a little bit further down, just because I want to bring up this. And let's just make this a bit bigger just so we can see it a little bit better. Um, and just to show you how things are sort of jumping around a little bit, I have my titles starting an actual, um, there's a column here. Then we have a main area that sort of goes here. I have this going the whole, spanning the whole size. But here, um, especially if you pay attention where the comment little feature is there, that is going to hop on over right now to over here. So that looks a bit better. Uh, these, well, that doesn't really matter too much with the grid area, but that moves up. The text goes from being sort of not full width to taking up a bit more space. If I go bigger again. Um, so you can see there's a big empty space that disappears. And then at the very small screen sizes, um, it looks much the same, but there is just a little gap that sort of goes away on it all. So this gap here and here disappear. And so all of that is done. Uh, really, really simply here where I have my regular, it's, this is my content snippet. So you can see I have my grid template areas and then um, I'm using some mixins and other things, but here I have a M MQ is for media query. So I'm setting up a media query for small screens. And then all I've done is rearranged the grid template areas here. Then for medium screens, I've reassigned the grid template areas again. Um, and the columns and all that are set up in another spot, so we don't see them right now. But um, I'm just sort of rearranging everything throughout um, as it goes. Oh, also including the line that I forgot about. So this underline is falling on my grid as well. So just this whole idea of being able to rearrange things completely, even if it's little elements and little, you know, it's not necessarily the whole layout that's changing, but you're just moving a little thing from one spot to another um, and changing the way empty spaces are dealing with at different screen sizes. It just makes it so easy when you're using grid areas and assigning those. So uh, yeah, that's why I am in love with grid areas. Isn't that great? <laughs> I am. Um, grid areas are absolutely fantastic. And remember when I said it, I was stressed because I'm announcing something on Friday? Well, you sort of got a sneak peek of what I'm going to be announcing there at the end uh, when I was looking at that SAS core stuff. So just a little, a little preview of what's to come on Friday. Um, but yeah, I hope you like this. If you are using Grid, let me know about it in the comments below or are you uh, waiting for support to get better? Because support for Grid is really good. If support's the thing that's really driving you nuts, let me know um, in the comments because... I want to know if, how many people that's actually holding back right now because support is getting really good and auto prefixer has gotten really good at it and I'm planning on doing a series uh, in the coming months about um, auto prefixer but I have also linked to a really great CSS trick series of articles down below that explores how you can set up and use auto prefixer so it works in Internet Explorer. You can use grid in Internet Explorer. Uh, and pretty far back, it really, um, so if browser supports your thing and why you're not diving all into grid, uh, I suggest you check out those articles. Um, otherwise, just thanks a ton for watching. Thank you so much. A massive thank you to my patrons. You guys are amazing. If you don't know about Patreon, people on there are supporting what I do here, and I can't thank them enough for it, especially Lauren, who's my supporter of awesome with a very generous donation. So thank you so much for that, Lauren. And just thank you to all of you once again for watching. Please come and join us at the community. Come. There's one click link. You're in. That's it. There's no nothing else. So, you know, you click the thing, write in a username, and you're there. And I'm guessing if you already have a Discord account, you don't even have to put a username in. So come and join us. There's no excuses. So I really look forward to seeing you there, hanging out with you, chatting, seeing what you're up to, and all of that. It's also a place you can give suggestions for videos. I'm always reading suggestions of videos in the comments section below, but if you want to 
you know, a more direct line of attack, you can try me there as well. And I think that's it. So until this Friday, when I have my big announcement, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.